Welcome back to another episode of Heaven and Healing Podcast. I'm Angela. So if you're watching, you're going to notice behind me that my vine wall is entirely gone. I've taken it down because I'm in the process of moving to Tennessee. This is going to be the last episode of Heaven and Healing that is recorded in my house in Pennsylvania. So the next time we sit down to do this, I will be in my new home, in my new studio, in my house in Tennessee. And I'm really looking forward to it. Um, If you've been listening for a while, then you know that it's no secret there have been issues with my production quality, the audio, the video, the edits. I don't have a team at this point. Obviously, it's all me doing this. I don't do this full time yet, as I'm recording this in real time, yet. Um, God willing, this will be my full-time endeavor at some point, but that's all in his timing. In the meantime, it's been trial and error, you know, making this thing work. And it has definitely been imperfect to say the least. But as I move forward, after this move, I'm going to set up my studio really nice. Um, The video quality is going to be so much better. The lights are going to be better. The audio is going to be better. The edits will be better. Okay. So we are taking this from amateur to as professional as I can within my own home setting, with my own self really being the one that kind of makes all this happen. Um, Because I take this very seriously, obviously I'm gaining more traction with all the interviews that I've been doing on Coltish, Melissa Doherty, The Daily Wire with Michael Knowles. So I really want the production to kind of amp up because this is important, right? You know, sharing gospel, exposing deception, talking about all things socially, culturally, politically relevant as it relates to scripture. It's all so important to be getting out there right now and I know that the better something looks, the better something sounds, the more likely it is to, you know, maintain an audience with. Um, and I want to give you guys the very best that I can out of all this and really put the very best that I can into it. You know, this is all for the kingdom of God. So it deserves my utmost um, efforts, my utmost diligence. So once we're in Tennessee, Things are going to be looking a lot better and sounding a lot better. And there's not going to be videos where I just cough and then pause for 20 seconds. And if you saw that video, you know which one I'm talking about. Um, You know, not going to be videos where my camera just randomly dies in the middle of an interview, things like that. So thank you so much for your grace and your patience as I've been building this thing. It's not easy, especially with how rapid this podcast has grown, with how rapidly I have grown. So it's all a learning curve. And again, I'm doing this all on my own. I don't do this full time yet. God willing, I will one day, but in the meantime, doing the best I can with what I have. So all that being said, this interview is a really, really good one. It's with the ex-psychic saved Jen Niza. So in this interview, Jen shares her coming to Christ testimony, how she went from being a full-time psychic to a full-time Christian, how the Lord really convicted her that psychic mediumship is 100% demonic. And Jen talks all about how demons pose as ghosts, as familiar spirits, and that psychic mediums cannot be trusted because their information is coming from demons. Now, all that being said... There is some technical difficulty. This time, it's not my fault, though. It's on Jen's end. And before you go and say, oh, no, it's a demonic attack. No, she has an old MacBook, okay? So she said to me, you know, post-production that her Mac is very old. There's been issues with recordings that she's done. So there is some static. Um, I pray over my audience right now that the technical difficulty is not too distracting for you, that you are still able to hear the message and really absorb what she's saying and take it all in without being too annoyed, for lack of a better word, with the minor um, static and just kind of overall less than perfect audio of this podcast episode. So I do want to apologize and warn you about that in advance Um, regardless, it's a great interview. Jen is amazing. She is 100% full of the Holy Spirit. And this is an extremely important topic because mediumship is everywhere. And it's all from the demonic realm. So we have to sound the alarms on this topic. 
Enjoy the episode. Hey, so I am here with Jen Niza. We are going to be talking about all things mediumship. Uh, Her testimony is unbelievable. She is actually one of the first people that I found as I was coming out of the new age. Her Instagram videos started to just pop up on my feed. And you guys have heard me talk a lot about how when I was just navigating out of that space, although things were triggering me, I was leaning into it and I was following the accounts anyway. So I started to follow her and she kind of started to open my eyes to the dangers of tarot and mediumship, obviously. So this is a really cool moment for me to have her here. Um, Jen, if you could, please tell everyone who doesn't know already who you are, what you do, and how you came to know Christ. Sure. Well, it's so nice meeting you. Thank you for having me here. Um, This ministry is so important to expose new age deception. So I'm Jen Niza. Nice to meet you guys, and I am a former psychic medium. I now use my time to um, expose the deception of the new age of mediumship. I share the gospel daily. I'm what you call a Christian content creator. And um, Jesus Christ saved me out of the occult nine years ago. So, uh, okay, I'll just get into it then. Um, It started for me very young. I was 12. And I started having these uh, premonitions, if you will, these visions that would come true. And they weren't um, big event type deals. They were just little and it happened and it came true. And I was like, what the heck? (laughs) You know, what's going on? What does all that mean? Um, The whole thing is that the door was opened in my home. We talked a lot about paranormal activity. Um, talking about ghosts was acceptable in my home. So that's how I believe the door was opened um, to start. And so then I had these experiences, but I was a kid. So I really didn't you know, know what to make of it. But when I was 13, I had my first tarot card reading and I just loved it. I was so intrigued by it. And that was when I believe I gave full permission to um, demonic entities to um, oppress me going forward. Because I signed up for it then. After that tarot card reading, I was all in. I was seeking it out and eventually got my own tarot cards. And my sister had her tarot cards and we would do readings um, on each other. And it just, um, it accelerated really quickly. You go further and further away um, from all things godly. I probably would have called myself a Catholic. Uh, We were raised uh, culturally Catholic. so. I think what people, I really want to say this, just because I heard about Jesus didn't mean that I knew him. I didn't know him. I didn't know him in my heart. I didn't have any sort of faith in him. And I just want to make that abundantly clear. Um, So I believed I was full in the new age, doing readings, going down numerology roads, you know, astrology, um, all things divination. Um, So it went to, it got to a point where as I got older, it was getting worse. Looking back, I would say it was getting worse. I was getting a lot of information about people that I never should have known. I never could have known. But then it accelerated to the point of seeing uh, these entities, seeing the demons, being touched by them. And then I had started having dreams of deceased people that I didn't know directly. Uh, in particular, this one who was connected to my, my uh, ex-boyfriend, the father of my daughter. Um, mm. He was that he started dating some woman who I had never even met. And so in this this dream, if you will, now, of course, looking back, I don't believe it was fully a dream. I believe that I was just oppressed and receiving information. And I was probably like half in and half out. And they told me about this boy who was young, you know, um, like 17 or 18 years old. And I could see him in this dream and that he died and how he died and that he knew whoever uh my ex's girlfriend was somehow, which led me to bring that information to my ex. And then he's like, I don't know, I'll ask her about it. And he came back a week later when he was visiting my daughter. And he said, "Um, you are not going to believe this. That was, you know, so and so's uh, 
brother's friend or something. And that um, is how he died. So what's his name? And it was just in an instant, the demons were happy to provide some information. And I told him this name that just, you know, came to, you know, it just pops in. That's how psychic information comes. It's not your thoughts. It just pops right in. And I told him, and sure enough, that was his name. So what I did after that was I went to consult the psychic medium because that's what I always did. I always went to psychics. I went to cards. I went to numerology whenever I wanted to know something. Um, and I had been doing that for some time because at this point I was probably around 24, something like mm -hmm. that. And I went to the psychic medium and she said, you're a medium also, and you need to help these souls. You need to help these people. This is a gift from God. And here's a name and number. And she handed me a business card. And it was a woman who let, was leading a divination class. Now, of course, I didn't know. I didn't even know the word divination. It wasn't called that. Um, you know, it was love and light, healing, you know, spiritual. She's a spiritual healer. She's a Reiki master. And she has this group. And I needed to go there to fully develop this gift that God gave me. So I did. I went. I went to this group. And it's not like psychic university. I say that all the time. That's not what it is. It's not going there to learn how to become a psychic, but it's being around like-minded people that you start reading, you start um, guided meditations on a regular basis. And the more you open yourself up, um, the more the demons will be in your space. Um, and of course, I did not know that they were demons. I really didn't. I knew there were bad entities, though, because I would get scared a lot. So I knew that. So the idea of this group and this woman was that she would teach us how to protect ourselves. You know, like we have that authority. We can just protect ourselves by imagining white light around ourselves. If you burn enough sage, hey, it'll be okay. You know, trying to filter out spirits. So the idea was that there were good spirits, which would be deceased people or angels um, or spirit guides, right? Or bad spirits, which, uh, you know, your vibration must be a little too low if you're pulling the, you know, the negative spirits or whatever. And this woman literally would say the Lord's Prayer as, right before she would, um, I don't remember if it was actually before the smudging or after it, but so she would uh, tell us to surround ourselves with white light, burn white sage around us in the room and say the Lord's Prayer right before leading us through guided meditation and all divination practices, because we had people in there doing like aura readings, crystals, tarot, uh, what have you. And of course, my uh, main way of reading people was mediumship, psychic mediumship. And it was happening more and more and more. And I was going every week. I, I left that group, you know, um, a fully practicing psychic medium. And my business was all word of mouth. I, uh, had a business card and that was about it. But I met people in my mom's house. I was like the girl next door, you know, wearing my gap clothes, like very business casual. Like I wasn't like somebody that you would think. And that's why I always say be careful because it doesn't matter what people look like, where they shop, what they drive, if they charge money, if they don't charge money, they're still mediums. Okay. And, um, and I was doing that uh, for quite some time. And my heart was filled with compassion. I mean, I wanted to help people. And I believed that I, and I believed that I was, and I was told that I was. So I just kept believing other deceived people. Like I kept going to the problem for the solution. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? I just kept going to people that were deceived like I was. And, um, I know it's like a long story, but so, <laughs> so I'm doing these readings. My daughter, I was a single mom at the time for the, for a, a, well, for a long while, actually, my daughter was born in 2001 and she's 21 now. So, um, raising my daughter in a house of demons and had my family around it. And, um, trust me, there was a lot of destruction and a lot of many, many consequences of doing that, that of course you're not putting together at the time, you know, um, a lot of anxieties, she started to see things. She started to hear things. She was telling me about chakras. She could never even know. She was like five, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so um, moving on, you know, so I'm, so I'm full in. And 
doing these readings and I, I would see demons and I still thought that when I was doing readings and it was who I thought was a deceased family member, that was comfortable. Like that was okay with me, but that felt okay. Like, Oh, it's, I'm crying with my clients, you know, I'm helping them or whatever. Um, but those are just familiar spirits. So um, I, I'm sure we're going to get there, but demons are extremely intelligent and manipulative and they masquerade as angels of light. So they pretend to be things uh, or to be people and to be angels. They pretend. So anyway, I end up getting married. There was a lot of problems there. I don't even want to go there right now, but I had a lot of issues, you know, running parallel to this um, divination. I get to age 36 and I come to a moment where it was just everything, I don't know, came to um, kind of an end of myself moment, end of myself, you know, like just, I had a, just a second to cry out for help. And I cried out to Jesus Christ. And it was like, wait a minute, that's not, not a spirit guide. Where's my dead grandmother? Like, what, you know, like not who I was used to crying out to or going to. And I cried out to Jesus Christ. And it was honestly, it was a moment that my spirit knew to do that. My soul knew to cry out to him. It had nothing to do with hearing his name throughout my life. It was a moment and it was a flash. It was quick. And I really believe, you know, that was the Holy Spirit um, nudging my heart, my first step of faith. But I had no idea what to do with this. I was like, what is this? You know? Um, I just want to add, he showed up. He definitely mm -hmm. showed up. I cried out and he showed up. I felt the peace. And I, when I say peace, it's not, and, and trust me, I'm not, and I don't want anybody to go based on my feelings or anything like that. I'm going to back this up. Don't worry. But honestly, there is a peace in Christ that you have never experienced that you cannot experience without him himself. Okay. Amen. And so I, was spiritually vulnerable. And here comes that part where I pray if any of your listeners um, are in that spot right now, please, please hear, hear what I'm going to say next. I was spiritually vulnerable. So that means I didn't want to be a psychic anymore, but I didn't know why. After this, after this meeting, if you will, with Jesus, I, everything got mixed up for me. I, I, I didn't want to be a psychic. I didn't know why. Now I'm on a hunt to see what was happening. What was I doing? Where was I going? This was my whole life. I mean, what, well, a, lot, a great part of it from age 12 to 36. And then I had turned 37 very quickly right after that. So 37. And I got caught in further deception. When you're in that spiritually vulnerable place, you can get deceived so easily. Um, I ended up picking up a book by a woman who was so, you know, she, she was claiming like a near death experience, not like one, she was claiming a near death experience. And apparently uh, Betty Eady embracing the light or embraced by the light was her book. And she really actually believes in reincarnation and um, all kinds of things that do not line up with God at all. And then I end up going back to doing my readings because that was my job, but everything changed. I was like, I'm not God. And um, so I just want you to know that, you know, God, like that was so weird. Why was I now talking about God and, and how it, it, so everything was changing and it got to a point where a friend of mine who I met in div that divination class that I was telling you about earlier, I met her there. We became very close. Um, this was some years later. And so we were good friends and she was coming over for dinner and she starts telling my husband and I about Jesus. And so she was saved and she's talking about Jesus and talking about this church that she was going to. Right. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. You know, good for you. You know, things that I hear people saying today to me, you know, and my husband's like, I'll go to the church with you. Cause she invited us. So he's like, I'll go. And he did. He went, I passed and he loved the church. And all I can say is four weeks later, I had that moment again. I don't know why, but I want to go to that church today. So I think back on it now, it's like, wait a minute. After I cried out to Jesus, I'm like, I don't know why, but I don't want to be a psychic anymore. Hello, Holy Spirit. You know, <laughs> it's like, 
it all comes together. Um, I didn't know why, but I wanted to go to the church that day. That was my day of complete salvation. I went to this church, they're singing. I, I, it was not anything I had ever seen before because I was used to Catholic mass. That's, you know, all I had seen as a, as a kid. Um, and even older, like I would bop in and out of church sometimes, the Catholic church. And so, you know, they're worshiping the Lord, they're singing the music, their, their hands are up. I'm like, what are these people doing? And they're singing Jesus Save Me. And it was that moment that I had a flashback, if, if you will. I don't know what you want to call it, but I flashed back to the moment I cried out to him months prior. I know, don't even start me, because this is a moment where I usually have the cry. And um, if I tell you I was overwhelmed, it was overwhelming. It was overwhelming joy. It was like so many feelings all at once. It was joy. It was but being filled with peace. Like the Holy Spirit came right into my heart, because I knew in that moment, that was my confirmation. That was Jesus Christ who saved me. That was he who showed up. He is the son of God. He died for my sins and he was giving me another chance. See, like that's the whole thing. He gave me a chance. I, if I had died as a psychic medium, I would not have gone to be with our Lord and save yeah, Savior. I'd not be in heaven. And I have some really, I have some um, cherished people that I do believe are there and I would not have been with them. And he gave me another chance and I was excited, nervous joyful, you know, all these things. And here's the cool part amongst all of it, because <laughs> I think it's all cool. But I went home from that church. And when I got home, I went immediately to my phone. And I know this sounds weird, but bear with me. I mean, it's technology. I didn't have a Bible where I was um, in my mom's house. I didn't have a Bible down there. My mom had a Bible upstairs. Another thing, like there was always a Bible. I never read it. I never cared about reading it. I did not. I was not like trying to read it or anything. And I went home from that church that day. And the first thing I did was I Google search. What does the Bible say about psychic mediums? And I understand, like, I try to think back. Well, was I thinking about it? Did I kind of sort of know something was wrong with it? No, this was knee jerk reaction, if you will. Um, if that makes sense, just it, it was a split, you know, quick, like I just got home and I'm like, what does the Bible say about psychic mediums? And when I saw it, because Jesus was revealing the truth to me, I know that that was his first order of business. God is a God of order. His first order of business was to get me away from the devil serving him because you can't serve both. Right. So I'm seeing like Deuteronomy 18, 10 to 12. You know, really starting in nine, when you enter the land, the Lord, your God has given you, do not learn to practice the detestable ways. I don't get all the words right. Don't, don't come at me. Um, if I, you know, um, there shall not be found among you, anyone who burns his son or his daughter as an offering, anyone who practices um, divination and the word medium follows. And I was like, wow, he's talking to me. The word medium. I was always gen psychic medium. And so I called my husband. He had like gone to the store or something. And I'm like, Jay, I have to quit my job. I have to quit right now. And he's like, wait, don't be so hasty. We'll make a meeting with the pastor. But I knew, I knew, I saw God's word. So this is like mind blowing to me. Never cared about God's word. Only, in, only when I was filled with the Holy Spirit, he leads you right to God's word. And so many psychics that I, you know, I, I, um, testify and I share the gospel and I share my story and I, I share um, the truth about mediumship on a daily basis. And I get a lot of psychic mediums and witches that come into my live on TikTok and everything. And one thing you'll notice is that they may say God's name. They may say Jesus. They may even say they believe in him, but they'll lead you away from the Bible, not to it. That's just looking back, guys, that is just so huge. Um, I was led directly, and that's what the Holy Spirit does. He points to Jesus Christ, okay? And so I was, I knew in my heart, and that's what happened. And that was nine years ago. I certainly did quit my job and picked up my cross and started following Jesus. I just like want to throw my hands up and yell praise the Lord because that testimony, every time I hear it, blows me away. And What's really crazy to me is how many similarities there are between our stories. I don't know if you're familiar with my story, but just very briefly, I mean, being interested in the paranormal as a child, same here. Growing up in the Catholic Church, same here. Going to church for the first time, not know it, like not being used to the environment because you're used to the Catholic backdrop, same here. Like 
all these similarities. And I just think it's really so beautiful how, like I said, you're one of the first people that God put in front of me. And he just does that. He puts people that he knows have a similar path to us because that helps lead us to him. And I just, he's just so good. And praise the Lord for saving you and for the work that you do. Now I've, um, I've written down some questions that I, I think are very popular amongst you know, Christianity and even not non-believers that kind of dabble in these things. Um, so the first is what are ghosts? Because when I was little, I saw a ghost um, that I, I didn't know who he was, but he later I figured out was supposedly, allegedly, if you're listening, I'm using air quotations. He allegedly was my great grandfather because I saw a picture of him. And I said, mommy, that's the man in the window. And my mom's jaw dropped um, because the night she and I were sitting in bed and she's facing the door, I'm facing the window. And I'm like, mom, there's, there's a guy in the window. And I'm like three or four years old. And she's like, what do you mean there's a man in the window? She thinks someone's like breaking into the house. Um, Mm -hmm. So Yeah. And I had always, I had grown up with that, with that interest, with that curiosity in the paranormal. I loved scary movies. I loved getting scared. I loved going to haunted houses. I loved all of that. And I always think back in hindsight, like, what was that? What was that? What was that draw? And I did hear recently, um, somebody told me that there are ghosts in the, there's a ghost in the Bible. Um, I don't, I haven't looked into that myself, but apparently it's in Samuel. Are you talking about the Witch of Endor when um, when King Saul goes to yes. visit the Witch of Endor? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me answer your question first. And then I guess if you want to, you know. Um, so ghosts. OK. Ghosts are not the thing with a sheet over their head with holes poked in it like you see around demonic Halloween or anything like that. A ghost is a familiar spirit. So what you described um, is so classic. I wouldn't be surprised if anybody told you along your uh, your journey in the new age that that was your spirit guide, like your grandfather was your spirit guide or anything like that, if they heard that story. But um, so a demon will present themselves as a familiar spirit. Um, they are unclean spirits. They are demons. So demons are, just a little background, demons are fallen angels. So we see in the book of Revelation how a third of the stars fell just like Lucifer fell from heaven. Okay. And when say, so God created angels with free will, just like he created us with free will. And they had a choice to be obedient to the Lord or sin against him. They chose to sin against him. So they were cast down here with Satan. Okay. They are a multitude. Cause if you think about the heavenly host, I I mean, I don't think we could even picture the number. It's such a big number. And then when you take a third of that, those are the demons that are here. And I don't say this to scare anybody, but those are the demons that are here. So what do they do? They present themselves as familiar spirits. So like you said, it looked like your grandfather. Um, For me, certain demons I saw looked like um, just people, not people that I knew per se, but people. And I would have back then maybe said it was a ghost. That's what it, because it looks like a person, a person, um, It could be a person that you know or a person that you don't know, okay? But it's never, ever, ever a deceased person. When we die, we go to one of two places. We're not coming back here. We have no communication with the living at all whatsoever. Um, So these demons come around and they bother you. And then especially when you're a child, and we hear a lot of reports just like us. Um, We were kids when it started. At least I think you were. Is that what you said too? Yeah, you were a kid. I was a kid and many children are oppressed when they're, when they're little and people think, but kids are so innocent. They're not trying to communicate with demons. They didn't ask for this. Why are they reporting such accurate information? Um, Things about people they could never have known because demons don't skip over kids because they're cute. Okay. They will oppress the children. Listen, um, to create, the latest psychic medium, right? We grew into it. We went down the rabbit hole, but also the parents to be led away from God. It's always to lead people away from God. So why will they pretend? Why will they give you information? They just want you away from God. They want you away from the gospel. They don't want you to be saved. Okay. So children are not gifted. They're oppressed. 
by demons. I was, and unfortunately you were too, but like you said before, praise the Lord for our salvation. Um, so when you, if you're seeing something like that in your home or in your space, a door has been opened to demonic oppression somehow. And that could look a little bit different for the Christian versus the unbeliever, because of course the unbeliever has already signed up because they are um, not believing in Jesus Christ. So they're kind of like an easy target. However, Christians um, are a target as well, because here we are sharing the gospel. Here we are exposing the truth. The devil doesn't like that. So we, we will go under some spiritual attack, but we're armed up. The Bible tells us all that we need to be prepared for spiritual attacks, spiritual warfare. And we do fight, there is a spiritual war being fought. If you go to Ephesians 6 and 12, you'll see that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities, authorities, and cosmic powers. There are different levels of demons. Some are more um, aggressive than others, but they've been around for ages and they know things about you. They know who your grandpa was. They know what he looked like. They know how to make themselves look that way. Like you said before, I think we said it, Satan masquerades as an angel of light. And it's no wonder that his servants would masquerade as servants of righteousness. So when you think about that too, right? Like righteousness, here I am, the psychic medium here to help you. The tarot card reader, I just want to help you. I'm good. I'm wonderful. This is love and light, you know, as a servant of righteousness. And that's what we were when we were serving the evil one, we were masquerading as servants of righteousness. And of course, we're not. Um, but the demons have been around for ages. So they know things about you. They see what you're doing. I know I'm taking this into a whole other, but, you know, frequently asked questions. Um, a quick break in the episode to ask that if you haven't already, please subscribe to the podcast on whatever platform you listen or watch. Give it a five-star rating and written review to help get this into more people's eyes and ears and spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much. Yeah, so how, how do mediums tell you accurate information? Um, this is kind of like twofold. And why would demons want to help you? Okay, this is a twofold thing. So one, how do they know things about you? They've been around. I just mentioned that they've been around for ages. They can see what you're doing. They've seen your family. They know more about your family than you do. They saw when you were in the tattoo parlor three years ago and you got the tattoo for your brother. They know that you were digging around in your jewelry box for the ring that mom gave you so that you could bring it to the reading in case they were going to hold on to it. And that's what the psychic is going to tell you. So now they've told you things that resonate with you, that are true, okay? And this is where... Um, this is where even more danger comes in, the predictions, because now they're going to also, they are going to say things that haven't happened yet. Those are future things. And can they predict things? Do the things happen sometimes? Yeah, absolutely. They are intelligent and they are powerful. They can manipulate things on the way to make those things happen. But here's the bottom line. They're not God. Nobody is God, but God himself. Only God knows everything. See, the demons actually don't know for sure that that thing is going to happen in the future. They can't, but they can predict it with amazing accuracy. So I always say, we can do that too. We can do that too. My husband gets up at the same time every day and he, he does certain things. So on the next day, wouldn't I predict that he's going to do what he did a hundred days in a row before that? But I don't know for sure. Something could happen different that day, right? So right. only God knows. And now the person is hearing this and it's like, but they were so accurate and all these things happened and that's going to happen too. It can provoke anxiety and fear because what about when it's not something so great that's going to happen? Someone's going to die. Um, you should divorce your husband. Notice that demons will provoke destruction, cause destruction and lead you to destruction. They will never lead you to, and I don't, people have said, oh, um, a psychic told me to go back to church. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what church you were going to. But if you don't know that divination and what you were doing is ungodly, it's not going to be um, the church you belong in. You have to be careful of false teachers. Um, but the psychic reader will not tell you to go open your Bible and read it from beginning to end because then the truth would be found out. Okay. Um, so then a lot of people ask after that, well, but why would a demon want to help me? 
because, you know, I'm going there. I feel better. I think I'm connecting to mom and dad from the other side and all this. Um, don't they help souls get to heaven? And, you know, why do they want to help? Like um, psychics that the police officers use on these investigations. Hey, they're doing something great. You know, they're helping find missing people and solving crimes. Here's the bottom line with that. They're not helping anybody. I understand why you think it's helping you because it's giving you something that you want in the physical sense. So you want so badly to connect with somebody that you lost because you can't handle the grief. You want the new job because you're poor and you don't know where to go with your life right now. You want to meet somebody. So you just will sit there willing to hear anything about meeting the man of your dreams or the woman of your dreams because you're lonely, you're vulnerable but they're leading you away from God and you're entering into demonic oppression the second you sign up for the reading. So number one, demonic oppression is not ever going to help you ever. It's so destructive. Second, if you continue on that road, you will be led away from God eternally, eternal separation from God. There is no help for your soul in a psychic reading. They're not helping you at all whatsoever. And they're lying to you. Demons are liars. That's what they're doing. They're guessing at some things. They make some, some accurate predictions, but, they're, but it's coming from demons and demons hate God and they hate you, okay? They're pretending to be your loved one. So how could you ever feel better? Notice you have to keep going back. It's extremely addictive. It's extremely addictive. And if you really believed that you were connecting with your mom, oh, now you have closure. Now you're healed. You're not. That's why you call and make another appointment. Who would want to lose touch with their mom if they really believe they had it, right? Or dad. Um, and then they start going down the same road. I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of psychics will tell you you also have a gift. Um, you should, you know, you, you know, you should go to the divination group. You should be a Reiki healer. You should go into this and that. And unfortunately, then a lot of people start buying their own cards, just like what happened to me. And it's it. And, you know, you said our stories are, are similar. I'll tell you, Angela, after, talk, you know, um, talking to many um, former New Agers, former psychics, there are so many similarities because we were serving the same master. Mm. You know, we were serving the devil. So that was a long rant. Oh, no, it's it's great. I, um, I, yeah, I saw a psychic medium after my grandmom died. She was like my favorite person. And that was what opened the door to new ageism for me. And it's the same thing you described. The medium, she prayed. She said that the archangels were in the room. She had Doreen's virtue, uh, Doreen Virtue's deck talking to heaven. Um, and I know Doreen has since renounced everything. I interviewed her as well. Um, so I went and I got that same deck. And then, yeah, six months later, me and my mom made another appointment with the same medium because it was in a party setting the first time. And the second time we wanted something one on one. So it's totally addictive. And I had for years, my grandma died in 2014. And that was that was the catalyst for everything for me with New Ages and because I didn't know any better. And I was spiritually vulnerable, just like you said. And I 100 percent consented to the demons because the second she died, I started, I started asking grandma, come to me, grandma, come to me. I just, I was so desperate for her and it broke my heart every single day being without her. I just, I would do anything. I, I, I got the tarot cards. I got the crystals. I went to the medium and I started reading books about mediumship. Luckily, and this is God's providence. I was always frustrated because I felt like I could never really develop the skill, but Regardless, there was something that was with me all the time. And I let, I felt it touch me. I would let it hug me. I would ask it to sleep in bed with me because I thought it was my grandma. And I would talk to it. I would ask it for signs. I would ask it for advice. I would ask it for help. I would invite it into the yoga practice. It was with me all the time. And there was a moment where I, after I had been saved, I felt it. I was alone in my house. I was washing some dishes and I felt it kind of creep up on me, if you will. And I had, I had known, you know, after watching your stuff, actually, I knew it wasn't her. And I, I started yelling at it and I told it to get away from me. And I called out to Jesus and I said, Jesus, send this thing to hell where it belongs in your powerful name. I don't, whatever this thing is, that's been posing as my grandma for the last seven years, bind it up and take it to hell in the name of Jesus Christ. Like 
And then I haven't felt it since after it had been with me that entire time. Wow. Yeah. So it's just really, it's insane. The things that we let in. So that's something I keep hearing you say is that we give consent to, is that true? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Willing, willing consent. If you go to the reading, if you buy the tarot cards, um, absolutely. It's witchcraft and you're signing up for it. Um, that's you saying yes mm. to them. Absolutely. A hundred percent. But the good news is, you know, what you said, the solution is Jesus Christ. They bow down to him. They're afraid of him. You don't need to go to man. You don't need to pick up sage. You should don't, don't do those things. Okay. <laughs> you know? Um, but you can come to Christ and be saved and you will have the Holy spirit. Demons bow down to Jesus alone, and that's our only spiritual protection. No candles, no crystals, no stage, uh, no holy water. We need Jesus Christ alone. And when you cried out to him, that was, he showed up. Amen. That does. And that is what he does. Um, and it's so funny, you know, how in all the practices, even with the mediumship, like you said, we always have to kind of be aware that there's evil spirits too. And I just, looking back on all of it, it's it's just funny how if it's all love and light, then why do we even have to worry about it? Why do we even have to worry about the bad stuff? And it's because it's all bad. It's just all bad. And, and some part of us knows that inherently. Um, could you touch on that, on that biblical ghost that I mentioned? Oh, the witch of, so what happened was King Saul uh, actually obeyed God initially and cast out all the witches. Um, they were not allowed to be there. So he had cast them out. So when he wasn't getting what he wanted and felt that he wasn't hearing from God, he snuck to see the witch of Endor and, and he snuck. And the Bible, you know, says he he went in the middle of the night or he went in the night, don't quote mm -hmm. me. And he, he went to see her. Now, there's a lot of, um, I hear two different things from people about the text that it really was Samuel, that God brought up Samuel. Um, and some people think he was a familiar spirit or a ghost. So, you know, I, I just want to say that sometimes God allows things to happen and it doesn't mean he's going against himself. He's not going against himself. The punishment was there. Saul was, Saul died. He was punished for what he did. He died the next day. It was punishable by death. Witchcraft is such a horrible divination is such a horrible horrible sin against God, because you are going, you're saying, I want knowledge. I want love. I want peace, but I'm not going to go to you, God. I'm not going to go wait on you. I'm going to go to the demons because that's the only other source of supernatural knowledge, power, and experiences. Mm, thank you for clarifying that. I wish I had known that before I sat down for this interview with that person, but um, did you have experiences after you were saved where any of the demons that had been talking to you kind of tried to bother you again or invite you back into what you were doing before? 100%. It's actually, I hate to say it, but it's kind of an eerie story because, you know, so, so I was saved. Hallelujah. Great. Had no idea what to do next. Really I made an appointment with the pastor of the church and started going to church. And I started getting counseling with one of the pastors at the church, Pastor Jonathan. And a few weeks later, after I was saved, I was in church on Sunday and Pastor Jonathan was preaching the sermon and he usually was not preaching the sermon. It was usually the senior pastor, but I know nothing about this at this point. You know what I'm saying? I'm just there, excited to be there. So Pastor Jonathan was preaching the sermon and all of a sudden I started receiving psychic information about Pastor Jonathan. Like I was just sitting there and all of a sudden, and that's still oppression. I just want to let you know it had nothing to do with my salvation because Christians can be oppressed and you need to know that. It's very important to know that. Okay. Um, that's why we have to always test the spirits. That's what the Lord says in first John four and one. So but I don't know. I'm a baby Christian at this point. I'm sitting there scared out of my mind because I thought that was the end of that. And they absolutely saw me going to speak with Pastor Jonathan every Tuesday. He was helping me on my walk. And here they are trying to bust up the spot, you know. So Tuesday comes, I go into my session with Pastor Jonathan and I looked like 
I had seen a ghost. I'm sorry. Can I have a little new age humor? I got to have a little. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not funny, though. It's not a laughing matter. I'm sorry. You can take that out if you want. But um, <laughs> so I, I sit there and, and honestly, I didn't know whether to even tell him or not because I felt ashamed. Did I do something wrong? Was I bad? Like, why was this happening to me? And I just thank God that the Holy Spirit gave me the strength and the courage to tell him because otherwise I would have been isolated with that. And it probably would have kept happening. You don't want to isolate. You want to reach out. You want to go to your brothers and sisters in Christ, go to your pastor. So I told him what happened. And he said, well, we're not going to glorify the evil one, but you can tell me what was said and we can talk. And, and I told him and he said, I'm not going to lie to you. It hit a nerve because you know what they do? They give truth with lies. Um, the demons is that's what I'm referring to when they give information in a reading there's truth and they twist it. They could twist the truth just like Satan did in Genesis chapter three with Eve, you know, did God really say, you know, and, and planting doubt and confusion. Um, and so I told pastor Jonathan, and that was, I want to say probably, um, that was God really used that, um, in a mighty way, that whole experience, because then I learned about the armor of God and, you know, how to pray, not how to pray. In other words, a formula for praying. No, not at all. But hey, I need to be praying every day. I need to be reading my Bible every day. That's um, part of our spiritual armor to fight in the spiritual war. But I didn't know it. I was a baby Christian. So I just pray that, you know, you know that even if there's a little oppression from the evil one, Number one, we walk in victory in Christ Jesus. If you are saved and you have Christ, you walk in victory. We don't walk in fear. We have a spirit of strength. It is a spiritual war. It is a battle, but we have an armor to put on. And how Paul goes through the armor of God, comparing it to the armor that the Roman soldiers wore. I really encourage you to do a whole study on that, guys, because it's amazing and it's powerful. Um, he's a sore loser. The devil is a sore loser. So having said that, that was, I would say, the biggest. After that, um, I do go through spiritual warfare. I mean, I'm out there, man. I'm in the trenches, you know. I'm out there sharing the gospel every single day um, on TikTok Live, um, in my content, in my local closed store, too. Mm -hmm. I, I, if I see that door open, I, I go right and I'm, you know, if, if the Lord opens the door for me, to share the gospel with people. Oh, man, you can't get rid of me. These put these people. <laughs> Amen to that. Um, I like that you said that Christians can be spiritually oppressed because sometimes I get messages from people saying I'm still having attacks with, am I doing something wrong? What's like, what's wrong with me? Am I really saved? And the devil loves to do that. Loves to tell us that we aren't actually saved, that our salvation is a lie. I think it's really important that people needed to hear that. And I actually just did an entire episode on how we tend to give the devil too much clout as Christians. Um, and I love what you said about the armor of God, because we are on the offense now. We're not on the defense anymore. Amen. I think that's a really important thing that Christians need to know. So I was curious, what is some of the um, backlash that you get from TikTok, especially when you put these videos out? Oh, cheese and crap. What, what do people like to say about it? What is their rebuttal? Oh, I have so much for you. As a matter of fact, I, I hit on something in the beginning of my, when I was sharing my testimony with you, uh, because of something a psychic said. So, okay. So on TikTok, particularly what these people can do and they do do is they'll try and stitch and duet my videos. So I'm an idiot. I had public duet and stitch on a few months ago. I didn't know that I did. Oh man. So I made a video of the five things, it was something like the five things that I learned about my job as a psychic medium when Jesus saved me. And man, did it make them mad. The, the demons that they're serving, it, it made very angry. So they will say that I um, was raised Catholic. So of course I knew Jesus and therefore being psychic is fine. There's no problem with it. You know, you could be a Christian witch or a Christian psychic. After all, hey, Jesus was a psychic, wasn't he? So I get that. They do readings. They were duetting my videos and pulling cards on me, which was um, especially uh, disgusting. And um, what else? Oh, gosh. Oh, then they said my husband, because so my husband was raised Christian. 
his parents came to Christ when he was little. Um, I think they baptized him in their pool. My husband was the biggest heathen you could ever meet. Sorry, but it's true. I'm very open about that. So it doesn't matter if you're raised Christian. It doesn't mean that you're a Christian. You have to make your own decision to come to Christ and follow him. And he was not following Jesus Christ and neither was I. So they'll say I was brainwashed by him, by religion. Um, you know, I wasn't a real psychic because it's a gift and therefore you can't just stop. And that is the worst of the worst. That is the furthest thing from the truth. It's not a gift. It's a choice. Um, when you're presented, the door is open demonically to you. If you walk through it, you made the choice to do that. If Jesus comes and reveals the truth to you, you have a choice. Pick up your cross and follow him or not. I argue, though, it, it's, you really can't deny him. You can't deny him. So it's an easy choice to make, but it's still a choice. Psychic mediumship is not a gift, and it is not from God. Sometimes I'll say, hey, listen, if you want to say it's a gift from the devil, but I don't like doing that because he doesn't give you gifts, okay? He's not Mr. Nice Guy. <laughs> um, it's supernatural. It's real. And it's something that you sign up for. And I know I've said that over and over again, but it is not a gift. So some of the, that's, so that's what some of these people say. You know, um, I wasn't a real psychic. Um, you can't just turn it off, so on and so forth. Another quick break in this episode to remind you that you can donate to the Heaven and Healing podcast ministry at donorbox.org slash heaven dash healing dash podcast dash ministry. I will leave that in the show notes. And if that doesn't work, you can always directly Venmo me if you do feel called to do so. My Venmo is at Angela Marie Yucci, which is the spelling of my Instagram, and I will leave that in the show notes as well. 100% of the donations go straight into the time, energy, and maintenance of Heaven and Healing podcast, and every donation is greatly appreciated. If you can't donate, all I ask is that you say a prayer. Thank you so much. Okay, so... Um, if there are people watching that maybe are feeling a little fearful of these topics, what is some advice that you can offer them in regard to not consenting to these things? I would uh, definitely get rid of, burn anything that you have right now. If you have dabbled in the new age, if you were doing it, if you were curious about it, if you have tarot cards in your home, you have books about it, angel cards. Um, crystals that you were using for divination, smash them with a hammer, uh, get rid of all of that. Yeah, get rid of it, man. Have, have a field day, but get rid of it. That goes back to Acts 19, 19, when they realized that um, we serve um, one true God in three persons, God, the Father, Jesus, the Son of God, and the Holy Spirit, of course. And they had a revival in Ephesus. And when they realized that um, only God has power and dominion and authority over demons, they burned all of their sorcery books, black magic, and it was a lot of money. So don't be afraid to get rid of that stuff. You need to do it. Get it out of your house. Don't have any gateways in your house, Ouija boards, um, and be discerning and careful. If you are somebody, like Angela mentioned, that she used to like the scary movies or the horror movies, you know, what we see goes into our mind. What goes in our mind can go into our heart and then into our behavior. So be so discerning. What are you looking at? Um, who are you spending time with? Um, and of course, I always say, read your Bible daily. Um, make sure you're in a good local church with sound teaching. It's important um, not to forsake the assembly and to be all together and to have, you know, of course, we're part of the universal church of believers, right? That's all believers everywhere, but we need to be part of our church, our local church, and be praying and use the gifts God gave us. And trust me, when you're serving God, you're less likely to be, um, you know, thinking about yourself. I, I know that's, mm -hmm. you know, because you mentioned before, I like how you said before, you know, don't over demonize things. Like there's not a demon behind every bush and every, you know, table. Sin is a real enemy of ours, um, the flesh and the world, of course. So anyway, sorry. Thank yeah, you. no, no, that's 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 so important. But at the same time, it's it's crucial to discuss these things because the Bible does say to expose the darkness. And if you look in the culture, it's everywhere and it's it's glamorized. I mean, Hocus Pocus 2 just came out on Disney and they sell 
products in Target for kids, like, you know, Yoga Barbie and, you know, spell casting um, Neopets, like things like that. And why, you know, why do you think that is that there's such a push for that? You know, it's because it's real. Yeah. And, and the enemy is the enemy is current and active. So this is what we have. Like you said, the culture, we have social media, we have technology and he's using it in a, in a, in a really big way. Cinema, Hollywood. I mean, witchcraft is trendy. I just did another mm. video about Vanessa Hutchins with um, her new series coming out. I mean, she she's embracing witchcraft uh, in a way that makes it look, you know, um, I don't romantic, you know, um, intriguing, um, you know, and this is the girl from high school musical, the one who the kids loved wizards of Waverly place. Um, and like you said, everywhere, Netflix has a, a show about the Ouija board. People mm. are fascinated by Jeffrey Dahmer on Netflix. They're fascinated by that show. And, um, uh, it's no surprise to me that all this came out around Halloween time. Also, um, the devil cashes in on his day. Trust me. Uh, by pushing things more and more, marketing it more and more, and in, and it always goes with money. It always goes with money. Did you see that? Like you mentioned, the products. Well, they're making money. Um, the readings. This is uh, it's a cash cow, and that's one of um, greed and pride is a part of following the devil. That's a demonic. Mm -hmm. Those are horrible sins. Um, but the devil's going to use what's available to reach many, many people. It's so easy to get a reading now. They are all over psychic readers, tarot card readers, intuitive advisors, psychic um, advisors on TikTok, on Instagram and YouTube. And all you have to do is click a button. They just make it so easy and cashed in. I, I know I keep using that term uh, on, on bad things that happen in the world, like COVID, a time when people were isolated and lonely. Well, the psychic readers went right onto TikTok and were doing the readings there. You didn't have to come to their house anymore. You didn't have to do any of that. Um, so why is it happening to lead people away from God? Hey, we don't, I'm not one of those rapture um, predictors or anything like that. And I don't think anybody should be. I think we should be prepared for the time that Jesus comes back. But let's be let's be honest about it. Um, things are getting bad. Things are getting really bad. And people want to have supernatural experiences. Um, the Bible just isn't sufficient for them. Um, they want to have extra experiences. The paranormal, it's intriguing to them because it's above nature. Uh, mm. And it's weird because in a way it's like, well, wait a minute. You don't believe in, oh, the shadow, I'm sorry. You don't believe in God, but it's so great for you to go to the other source of supernatural power that because that comes back to you you being your own god you doing whatever you want you trying to control things through witchcraft witchcraft offers something that it really can't deliver right it offers you money solace peace um you know jobs uh you know ho and false hope yeah, you're going to meet somebody one day, you're going to get the job or, you know, this is your loved one and, and all that. And it's always about you and what you want and not never about what you need. And what you need is the gospel. What you need is Jesus. What you need is protection, joy, and peace, not happiness, not happiness. Happiness you're going to be chasing forever. It's, it's, it's always going to be the next thing. You need peace in Christ and eternal life. And I think, you know what, you know what? people need to know we are going to die that's the bottom line our bodies are going to die but we don't cease to exist our soul will go on and where it goes depends on your relationship with Jesus Christ and instead of thinking about me 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 now and the physical stuff and in the flesh what can i what can i have what do i want what about what do you need where am i going who do i need you need Jesus to get through life. Trust me, he's the compass. He's the true light of the world. And um, eternal life is no joke. When you look at life here, it's only a little fraction, a tiny little fraction of what's to come. And, um, and you have a choice. It's a choice. And it's a moment. 
It's a moment that you have. We all have moments, right? We have a moment when we got our driver's license, a moment when we graduated high school or whatever, you got the job, it's a moment. Your moment could be today um, to accept Jesus Christ. Amen. That's, I mean, that's everything because, yeah, what you said before, I just want to clarify this too, because the demons will tell you accurate things. The mediums will tell you accurate things. They will bring feelings. And again, feelings, we should never rely on those. They will bring you feelings of comfort and of peace momentarily. But none of those things, even if it feels real, are worth sacrificing eternity with Jesus. They're not worth giving your soul up for. So chasing these little highs, as I like to call it, these little highs with mediums or with astrology, which is what I was really into, or with yoga or with Reiki, it does not compare to the glory that is found in Jesus, not just in this life, but in what happens when you die. And I like that you said that because a lot of people want to shy away from that, but it's true. We die. We're going to die. Everyone's going to die. And where are you going to go? If that happened to you right now, where are you going? Um, as we start to wrap up here, I wanted to ask you just your opinion on this, or I don't know if you have anything scripturally on this. Why do you think that we are drawn to scary movies and haunted houses and things like that? Hmm. Well, I, I, I'm not particularly drawn to them or so. were, you know, <laughs> oh, why no, people can be, why people can be, um, that must that must go back to that temptation of a feeling, you know, like you were saying before, whatever feeling that you're getting from going there, but also that um, fascination with something that is ungodly. So let's think about it for a minute. Usually, people that are saved, right, are not as attracted to those things, or probably not at all. Um, so without Christ, we're spiritually blind. So we are um, able to go down those roads faster than somebody who's in Christ. There's no protection. You're spiritually blind, but you're still like looking for something. I think you're still looking for this supernatural experience. Um, that's all I have on that, honestly, because I believe it or not, I really wasn't um, that intrigued by that stuff, but I know a lot of people, a lot of people are. And Halloween is such a, I know I, I'm so disgusted by Halloween. It's, it's you know, uh, they have in Florida, I think it's Disney, what's it called? Fright Fest or something. Mm -hmm. They have something. They have something there. And, you know, why would somebody really want to be frightened? That's yeah. weird, mm -hmm. isn't it? It is. Shows, yeah. But you're spiritually blind. But is it, I mean, you're, you're susceptible. Um to all things demonic, your eye isn't trained, your eye isn't opened, you know, in Christ, yeah, well, I mean, I could, I could tell you this, in 2 Corinthians 10 and 5, it says, we demolish all pretensions and arguments that set themselves up against the knowledge of God, so when we have the knowledge of God, we're reading his word every day, we're training our eye for spiritual attack, right, because somebody like us is going to say, wait a minute, that psychic is talking about God. No, but psychic mediumship, God said, no, it's demonic. So we're going to have an eye for what's demonic faster than somebody who doesn't have the word of God. They're not spiritually training their eye for the attack. So they can go down those roads based off of feelings, emotions, and temptation. And the devil is the tempter. That's what we need to remember, who he is. We don't glorify him, but who is your opponent? You would want to know your opponent if you went into a boxing match, wouldn't you? Hmm. Know something about him? Hmm. So That's we have great. to know that our opponent is the manipulator, the liar. He's the father of lies. He's a thief and a murderer and the tempter. And people going into those things opens them up to demonic doors. And that's how he gets you. He gets you through Fright Fest. He gets you through the horror movies. He gets you. And that's the open door. And that's the whole point is a battle for your soul. So he's trying to get you and Jesus is right here, right? And you can come to him freely as you are today. Put your faith and trust in him, not psychics, not mediums, not scary movies. You can go to Jesus Christ today as you are. You don't have to get your ducks in a row. You can come to him as you are. He already paid the penalty 
he already took God's wrath for our sin. God hates sin. God is holy. We're sinners. We've all broken his law. And God loves us so much that he sent his only son to take the penalty, to take his wrath for our sin that we deserve. We fully deserve to be hell bound. We deserve that. But Jesus stepped in anyway, and that's love. Hmm. He committed no sin, and he took the penalty on the cross for us. And when we put our faith and trust in him, the Bible says that we will be saved. We believe that he died for our sin, that he was buried and raised the third day. We will be saved, and the Holy Spirit comes to live within your heart and seal our inheritance, which is the kingdom of heaven. That's Ephesians 1.13. But um, it's so amazing, and he's our only spiritual protection. So I really would encourage people to make that choice today. Make a choice for him. Um, and don't go down that road. Don't open the doors anymore to the demons. If anyone's watching, I know they can see this too. You, the, you're just glowing with the Holy Spirit. Like God is really working through you. Um, I have just like a few more questions. We'll wrap up in just a few minutes here. I wanted to know, um, I was curious, did you, do you have any friends still from the psychic community that you are a part of, or did they all just kind of reject you the moment that this happened? Oh, massive rejection. <laughs> um, there is one woman though. And you know, I pray she, I pray she would hear this one day or see this. Cause I really love her. She was like my number one client and, um, she did let me share my testimony with her and, um, tell her about Jesus. She's so deep into the deception though, mm -hmm. even still. So, um, I like if I see something that she posts on Instagram, you know, with the moon and Aries or the whatever, you know, all that kind of stuff. I may comment, write her a private message and and I leave it at that. So I wouldn't say that we're friends per se um, anymore, but at least the door is open there. So I'm I'm thankful for that. But I think because no. a lot of my followers get um, upset that people in their lives, once they start to turn from the new age, don't want anything to do with them anymore. And what I have come to realize is that when, when the common denominator in a relationship that you have with somebody is sin, when you come to Christ, that's just, it's going to fall away organically. And it goes back to what we said that it's not worth, it's not worth the eternal glory. Um, and God restores too. I understand also, I understand being sad about people that you lose, right. but God has restored to me and multiplied. He's multiplied. He's restored to me and multiplied. I mean, a family in Christ, brothers and sisters in Christ, in the church, people I've met on TikTok. I mean, the most amazing, wonderful relationships that I'm so blessed to have. So I'm I'm not missing a single thing. Yeah. Amen. And for the record, you don't, because you said in your testimony that you had nothing but good intentions. And I think as we talk about demons, that can be misconstrued as that the psychics themselves are demons or that the mediums are demons or that people in the new age are demons, but you don't think they're demons. I mean, you and I were there. So, you know, just as well as I do, we had good intentions. So these people have good intentions, but they're just, it's their, it's their influence. It's the deception. So would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, think about what deception really is. If, if you, if a demon came up to you and was like, Hey, I'm a demon. Um, you really shouldn't be doing this, but you know what, would you fall for it? I mean, you know, deception is deception. We were heavily deceived. We are people that wanted to help other people. We have compassion and empathy and things like that. Um, no. And it goes back again to Ephesians six twelve. You're not fighting flesh and blood. That's not who we're wrestling. We're wrestling the entities that are, um, influencing the people. So no psychics and mediums and witches and every other sinner they're not demons you know those those are some of the things that we were um freed from hallelujah but i'm sure we had many other sin too without christ you're in bondage to sin you're addicted to it um but it doesn't make you an evil person you are not the demon but you're serving them and you have them all around you and they're deceiving you so the idea is how do you break the chain how do you break free you can't but jesus can so you, you give it to him. Amen. Well, Jen, this was amazing. Thank you for coming on with us today. Um, so where can people find you? Oh, sure. Um, you can find me at www.xpsychicsaved.com. That's my website. And it links to my TikTok and my YouTube. 
and um, everything else I've got going on. And I'm really excited because my next book is about to be released, Out of the New Age and Into the Truth. So oh, it's, a, it's a sequel to my first one. From what's Psychic your first? To, yeah, From Psychic to Saved. Uh, I published two years ago. I'm super excited around the same time too. So um, From Psychic to Saved is my testimony and some helpful information. Um, and especially if, guys, if you're into evangelism, you know, just some good information as to where the psychics are getting their information, so on and so forth. And this book, Out of the New Age and Into the Truth, I'm going deeper into the practices like yoga and angels and demons and divination. So super excited. Sounds good. Um, well, thank Would you. you just do us the honor in closing out in prayer for us? Oh, it'd be my pleasure. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come before you, God, with gratitude in our hearts for our salvation, Lord. Thank you so much, Father, for giving us another chance, Lord, to, um, to serve you, uh, God, and to be with you eternally. Lord, I just pray your blessing over every single soul that would have ears to hear this message. I pray that they would have the ears to hear. And those who are listening and those who are watching, God, please bless them, Father. Whoever is lost, God, I pray that they would come to you today, come before you and accept the free gift of salvation that your son offers us, Lord, that he died on the cross and that he uh, was buried and raised the third day, Lord. He defeated the grave, God. He, he defeated the devil, Lord. And we have no fear. We have no fear. We just have strength, Lord. So I just pray that, Lord, for the people that are listening, I pray that you give them the strength to get rid of all those new age practices, addictions, and uh, paraphernalia, Lord. I pray, Father, that their eyes would be opened to the truth today, Lord, that they would hear the truth, Lord, today, and that they would put their faith and trust in you and be free, God. I, I pray for their spiritual pr uh, protection as well, Lord. I thank you for my sister Angela and for her ministry, Lord. I, I pray that you would bless it and protect it, Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.